Sure. If you want, we can do that, right? This is a one Your friend, hold on. So your friend, being the moderator, is probably not a very fair situation, right? Oh, I apologize for being a friend. Sure. So it's not, right? Yeah, no, you don't have to apologize for being anybody's friend, comrade. I'm just saying, if you want to do a 2v1, I'm comfortable with that. Otherwise, I don't want you posturing as some kind of like neutral moderator. Uh huh. Okay. Um. Sure. So you guys can start your opening statements. Uh, All right. Anyways, um, I just started live streaming. So, mm -hmm. uh, welcome everyone to this debate. I'm debating. Uh, how do you pronounce your name? I don't actually know. Oh, uh, just like however you want to. It's fine. Synth. That's how yeah, it works. It. All right. I'm I'm debating Synth here on the economics of socialism. He is a market socialist and a proponent of worker cooperatives. And Cash is moderating. Moderating. And like he said, uh, we'll start with opening statements. And I'm going to do a five minute opening statement. And then Synth will do a five opening statement. And then we'll jump right into open discussion. Oh, just likely. heads up. I seed my time for the opening statement. I didn't write an opening statement uh, because you didn't tell me about that. So, okay. Well, I mean, you that's usually. All right. Well, it could be anywhere from like two to, f to 10 minutes to 15 minutes. You didn't tell me any kind of time for it or an opening statement, right? Okay. Do you still want to try to like uh, no, I'll just, just have some time to talk or just want to jump right into it? Yeah, we can jump right into the back and forth. All right. Sounds good. All right, today I will be discussing the economic viability of worker cooperatives and market socialism. A worker cooperative can fall under a few similar definitions, but to make it simple, let's call it the democratization of the workplace decisions and entrepreneurship. We have seen many examples of worker cooperatives to look to. We've even seen them attempted at large scales. From 2002 to 2008, the Venezuelan government invested heavily into a worker cooperative campaign. They started over 280,000 worker cooperatives. The co-ops took in state investments in order to get them started. In 2006, a survey was performed to examine these co-ops and only 50,000 remained. This happened for many reasons. Some co-ops exploited government grants, some failed because the workers were too uninformed to make business decisions, and some failed simply for a lack of good leadership. Yugoslavia, they attempted to create an economy on worker cooperatives. Entrepreneurship was destroyed the creation of new firms suffered. Unemployment went through the roof. In the 1970s, the amount of citizens employed abroad grew to 20%. The results are clear. Killing the entrepreneurship destroys intellectual division of labor, which is the basis for the advance of the economy. Now, what about co-ops today? Maybe they learn from their mistakes. We do see some positive data coming from the co-op sector, for example, in the paper Bartlett 1992, a review of worker co-ops in uh, North Central Italy, Italy, it found higher productivity and lower income differentiations. However, we can't jump to conclusions based on a handful of data points in an apples to oranges comparison. Private firms had greater involvement in the export market. Cooperative, cooperative firms have greater access to relatively, relatively protected market Sorry. I can't read that fast because I'm dyslexic. So I'm just, I just want to apologize for that. No, it's all good. Cooperatives may have greater access to relatively protected markets associated, associated with sales to local buyers and private firms, which engage more heavily than co-ops and sub. Sorry. <laughs> oh man. And private firms, which engage more heavily than co-ops in subcontracting. Next paper, Stable 1998 says co-ops are less likely to fail in their early years as opposed to private firms, but they're more vulner vulnerable after the fifth year. Now in the overall literature, there's not a consensus showing co-ops have lower fail rates. Co-ops initially are a lot more favored by both governments and banks. In fact, 74% of co-ops stated the main reason they were started was taxes. The failures coming later in the life of co-ops make sense when we look at other things. For example, as pointed out in a 2005 co-op study published in the National Bureau of Economic Research, co-ops invest less in long-term assets, take fewer risks, grow more slowly, and create fewer new jobs. They also exhibit lower labor and total factor productivity. Without taking risk and long-term investments, it's much more difficult to grow. Once you have the workers in charge in charge, you abolish the entrepreneur and everything important about him. 
A defining characteristic of the entrepreneur is his time preference. We see through co cross-country analyses that countries with lower time preference overall experience more economic growth. It's a fundamental aspect of economic success. Staber's 1992 review of the literature on worker cooperatives found worker cooperatives probably make only a modest, if any, contribution to the creation of new and good jobs. Surveys of small cooperatives suggest that a strong tendency towards economic marginal marginality. An in-depth study of five worker cooperatives in the United States found their salary levels were well below the average of those paid in similar capitalist organizations. That's uh, Rothschild's wits, 1976. At least in one case, wages were so low that some members could not subsist and were forced to leave the organization. A larger survey of 95 worker cooperatives in the United States showed wages were well below the prevailing rates of, in the conventional business sector. That's Jackal and Crane, 1984. A 2006 study in worker, uh, 2006 study of worker cooperatives in Italy found co-op wages were 14% lower and concluded the data could be used to make broad generalizations. Their limited benefits and organizational survival depend mainly on their incentive to use labor power. Working conditions in these organizations were best described as unstable and self-exploitative, leading to a burnout and a higher rate of member turnover. A 2013 German study found worker worker managed firms redistribute in favor of low wage workers in worker managed firms. Uh, sorry, uh, in worker managed firms, high ability members are more likely than other members to exit and their hazard ratio ratio of high ability members is lower for founding members and for those employed by worker managed firms in which there's less pay compression. So overall, looking at the research ben, you need on worker more cooperative, do you want like another Sorry, five what? minutes? Do you want like another five minutes for your thing or whatever? Oh well, this is uh, okay. I, l let's just say this is the open discussion because that was the end That's of right. me actually reading. So now I'm just kind of jumping into the open discussion because oh, okay. that's definitely much easier. Um, so you, overall, looking at the data on worker cooperatives, what's that? No, I can hear you. All right, I was making sure you guys could okay. hear. Sorry. All okay. right, I was making. I had an audio problem. Go ahead. All right, so overall, looking at the research on worker cooperatives and market socialism, we see many failures and many problems that would be even more so if we were to expand our economy into a full market socialist economy. So my question to Synth is, how do we fix these problems and why should we want a socialist system like this if we have no evidence it would actually work? Sure. So uh, I would disagree that we have no evidence that would actually work. I think we have uh, real world examples we could point to of worker cooperatives that, that function. So if there's like any amount of it that does work, then we then get into the conversation of like what we should do. And that's a conversation about like the ethics of, of if we should be socialist or capitalist, right? Uh, and when I, I know your name is like Prax Ben, I'm assuming that's short for like Praxeology Benjamin, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm guessing the ethical prescriptions you make are probably going to be like the of the, um, the sort of like you have these foundational axioms that you then build upon, right? That you think are like um, something that you could, you, could, you could just like assume to be true in the same way that a Praxeologist would. Sure. Okay, so uh, when you have these foundational axioms, what do you think those are? Uh, like I said ahead of time, we're going to be doing an economics debate, not a debate on praxeology. So you asked me, you, you, the message you sent me was, yo, I was told I should debate you on socialism. I said, sure, mm -hmm. what are your views on it? You said you're an anarcho-capitalist. So um, if you're right. debating on socialism, said, whether or not we should be socialist, that's an ethics discussion. Right, and then I said socialism is about the mm -hmm. allocation of resources or uh, economics is about the allocation of resources and uh if i remember remember correctly allocating them to or s fulfilling the subjective needs of the populace so that's what i said we were going to debate about okay so, so fulfilling the subjective needs of if the populace if you would like to debate me on is... praxeology we can set that up another so, time so, so you set up a debate on socialism we're going to talk about socialism and capitalism right uh, if we're going to if we're going to do a comparative economics discussion and also try to make prescriptions off of that, then ed, then ethics is definitely part of the discussion. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing this is why you wanted like a moderator who you think is friendly to you here, so that they could probably like pull it away from an ethics discussion. Um, it doesn't seem like your friend is doing that though. So we can talk about ethics if we want. Okay, so you're accusing him of being 
biased. When no, actually, yeah, that he was going to try to pull really? it away from an ethics no? discussion. I just said the and then you point out that he didn't, in fact, do this. So you're just, I just admitting said that you came that. into this debate with bad faith expectations. Um, nope, I expected you yeah, to be so bad. I, mm, very interesting. And so you, I, I like you were. Bean, Go ahead. Uh, one, one second, dude. One second, dude. Mm -hmm. I told Bean Go that I'm going to let him pick up on that first, and then I'll intervene if it becomes a red hearing or anything irrelevant to the actual topic. Um, mm -hmm. So that's to answer your question. And you guys are interrupting each other it quite a bit. Okay, so I was correct. Problems, yeah, and this really is what I pointed out. Because I started off asking you questions, and you immediately turned around, changed the entire subject of the debate, and tried to ask yeah. me questions. Uh -huh. so this isn't a praxeology debate. That it's has to do debate. with it's epistemology, it's about ethics, ethics right? yes, whatever. This does have to do it's with a ethics. completely different subject. No, it's not a different subject. I can send yeah, the is. DMs to the moderator if you'd like. Um, but your friend here, I'm glad he just admitted that that was your goal. Um, you guys discussed this in advance that you were going to like try to keep it away from ethics. Yeah, we discussed I'm gonna talk how to about moderate ethics. a debate because he's never moderated a you debate. Discuss before. So the moderator you asked for was not somebody who's moderated debate. Are you going to debate? You, you want me to just kick you off of here? I would love to debate. You on I will literally kick you off if you don't debate. You can kick me off. I've got a spike. Like, All right, go ahead. Following about as Please big as yours. Doesn't the matter questions that I presented. So I'm going to talk to you about ethics, and yeah, you're going to cry about it. All right, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Yeah. He he said you would probably try to bring up ethics uh, when mm -hmm. you're not talking about ethics. Um, we are. So I can send you our DMs when it's not concerning ethics. Yeah, I never mentioned I can, ethics. Once. So I'll In fact, uh, I repeatedly I'll talk, told you before on. the debate we would not I'll discuss on. ethics. Okay. Hold on. You told me before the debate we wouldn't discuss ethics. I'm going to mute him. Send me, send me DMs. So send I repeatedly me, really, hold on one really second. Quickly, cash. Really quickly, send me DMs. Just um. I'll put my chat or I'll put my Instagram in the uh, to the private chat. Feel free to send it to me. Do I have to go through all this? <laughs> okay, hold on Apparently. one second. So I'm just going to unmute myself. Um, so I guess if this is what you're going to do and just like run away from the debate, we cannot talk about it because um, there's yeah. I told really you. I knew you would come into this being bad faith. I yeah, totally so expected. Really you think that you and your you, you think you and the mod you cracks, hold on, but four you, times hold on. Group chat. I said this will not be an ethics Let the moderator speak. Come into this expecting. Let the moderator speak. I said we will not debate. Go ahead. Let, let the moderator speak. Anyways, all right, go um, ahead, Cash. Send the DMs to me, right? And I'm sure Bean, I'm sure Bean would love to debate you on praxeology or ethics in general another time. Um, I would horrifically doubt that he wouldn't. So uh, literally, the reason I challenged you to this debate, actual... Prax, are you comfortable with oh me God. reading out the DMs? Up, Bean? I'll re I'll read them out myself right now. Okay, are you right. now listen, doing? listen. The reason I challenge you to this debate is sure, because can... I worked hard for hours uh -huh, and hours. Uh -huh. Unlike you, because you never read studies, sure. you always use studies you do not read and studies that even disagree sure. with you. You're a very bad faith debater. All right, oh I spent God. hours. Do you think communicating with the research. moderator about what specific I spent, topics you no, want to like keep me I, away from? Hold on, yo, boys, talk. I spent boys, hours boys, reading I'm just going to unmute myself. You can mute me, and I can I can do the exact opposite. I can just press the mute button again. You don't know how streamyards work. Listen, 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 right? Just send me the DMs. I put my Instagram in the private chat, send it to me, and then we can uh, debating, right? Is it the one that's cash.vi? Is that your Instagram? Thank you for reading out loud. Yes, it is. Yeah, sure. It's like there's, look, there's like nobody watching this. Who cares? All right, here. I'll read it. I'll read it exactly. Yo, I told you I should, well, uh, I yo, I was told I should debate you on socialism sometime. Sure. What are your views on it? Well, I'm an anarcho-capitalist. I saw a couple of your debates with capitalists and it seems exactly. like they weren't at all good good representatives. And then I said, well, because he didn't answer for a while. And I, he said, I'll see if I can make time. Busy lately. What is your main issue with socialism? And I said, a socialist economy cannot function. And then he said, function? And I said, yes, the point of an economy is to allocate the factors of production, efficiently produce, and provide for the needs and subjective preferences of society. Is it not? If, of an, if an economy is not functioning, these things are not being met. And then he said, okay, mm -hmm. what days do you have 7 p.m. 7 p.m. free? And yes. then we scheduled the debate. And then we talked about maybe three times since then. And every single time he said he would bring up ethics. And I said, I will mm -hmm. not debate you on ethics if I bring you on. Because we did not agree to debate on ethics. That's an entirely different thing. That's so you were warned well in advance. This for. is like a bad faith surprise, right? So, you knew in advance I was going to bring up ethics. Wait, so I had plenty wait, of time wait, to wait. prep for it. So, yes, I did know you were going to bring up ethics. And I was talking about no. And you didn't prep for it. Question. Both of you guys be quiet. Both of you guys be quiet. No, I didn't. Really quickly. So mm -hmm. really qu be quiet. So from what I understand, right? You guys both agreed. Um, on what, what did you say it was? The uh, like how economics work in socialism is that what it was? Nope. Yeah. The debate is said, on socialism. I, socialism. I was told I should debate you on okay, socialism. Okay, wait, wait. Prior, listen. Prior to the seven mm -hmm. p.m. Uh, EST, you're free, right? It was mm -hmm. over the economics of socialism. No. Okay, so you both agree to that, right? No. 
What do you but mean? Yes, I know. I'm going. So I'll read it over again. The thing we are debating on, the thing you, that Hot Bean Sauce wants, your friend wants to debate on, was socialism. A socialist economy up. cannot function. Yes, you brought that this is my up. exact yes, quote. Yes, I'm aware. You brought this up as a supporting point for why we um, shouldn't be socialist. Look, Prax, you can okay, do the fake so laughing this, thing if you want, but it's like co. Okay, so prior prior to that, you both agreed on uh, what you uh -huh. was supposed to debate on, and then you no, had we didn't. Afterwards. No, we did. I'm gonna. What I'm just gonna said. put the DMs up on my screen. So, um, because like you and your friend here are just like lying about this at this point. All right. Oh, well, I can't lie because I actually don't um have any uh evidence per se, and that's why I'm just asking. Sure. You um, the, the you pictures. can just. Sure, I'll uh, I'll just like open up my uh, I'll open up my socialist economy DMs. cannot function. Yes, yeah, let's this is do a supporting it. point. Really, this is a supporting point for you. I just, yeah. I just, I just want to see. You no, know, I I said that as my as why I'm against socialism. You said why are you against socialism? That's what I said. A socialist economy cannot function. Okay. And now socialist prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Go ahead. Is a reason why the you are against socialism. Yes, correct. The floor is yours. Prove me wrong. Go a ahead. socialist. Hold on. A socialist economy cannot function. Really, is a reason really you're against socialism. Go. Yeah. Correct. Right. Go right. ahead. Prove on. me wrong. One second. Right? One second. Right. Okay, this is just like a so, shit show. No. I'm going to talk up, about ethics, right? right? Like, there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, my God, dude. I mean, yeah, I can. Yeah, oh, you're God, dude. You're gonna okay, kick me ethics. off. Then. He didn't agree to ethics, but I. He did. He agreed to talk about if we should be socialist or not. No, right? I didn't. That's an ethical God. discussion. Dude, dude I have multiple witnesses. You said who are I was in told VCs I should debate you sometime on me socialism. I saw me say I refuse to debate ethics. No, I was told I should debate you sometime on socialism. One second. One second. Why don't you just mute right. him? You both now I know why Destiny blocked you. <laughs> I don't care that Destiny blocked me. Hold up. Lots of people right. have blocked you. Both yeah, I know. Blocked. Lots of people know, have blocked you. Fact, yes, lots of people get you. really mad when they get disproven. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the, nobody believes the fake laugh. Right, really quickly. Oh my God, bro. Shut up. Jesus Christ. Listen. This really is your quickly, moderator? He's having right? a panic you, attack. Holy shit. Oh my God. Dude, you know shut you know up what? for one second. You let's just Let's just do that. Right? This is the best really thing. Quickly, this is literally people better people than I thought oh it was going to be. Oh my god. <laughs> I just wanted proof. He just chickened out of the whole debate on a live stream. That is fantastic. And he just left. Jesus. Yeah, no, I was going to pick up on the prax part. And I, don't, I was trying to be unbiased. Both of you guys kept talking over me, right? Which I can understand being a little heated. And I understand he's probably watching this and be a little mad and be called biased. What did I even do to be called biased? <laughs> that what that was literally like i did i was not like he, i was surprised he even showed up like he literally said he wasn't gonna show up in the stream yard and i was like oh this guy's just gonna check it out i had a backup debate already and everything and then he's like oh i am coming i'm like okay i guess we're gonna have it and then he goes straight into oh i'm gonna change the subject and then he lies about it what we agreed to and then he, he, I literally read out the messages and he's like, yeah, that's what they said. And then he's, and then you're like, so that's what they said. And he's like, oh no, that's not what they said. That's hilarious. And he know he knew that I wasn't going to debate this. I told him like, I, this wasn't a bad faith thing yeah, at all. Was... Like I told him straight up, I am not bringing you on here to debate praxeology. I wanted to talk about all of the research I did, the hours and hours of research I did on worker cooperatives because these market socialists refuse to do it themselves. They don't read this stuff. They go and read half of the abstract. And then they're like, oh, look, worker cooperatives are so good. You know, maybe we should just turn this into a stream where I go over uh, how dumb worker that. cooperatives are. <laughs> All right, I guess I already did. Uh, so essentially, well, here's the thing. I was like, I was having audio problems too. I feel like I should do that. I was having audio problems because um, my timer went off and the thing paused yeah. for me on my phone. Yeah, and that's why I can interrupt. I was going to give him six minutes instead of five for his opening statement or like his assertion in general. But yeah. Anywho. Mm. Oh, well, Anywho, I guess it's not happening. No, what I was trying to do, because he, he said prior to like, what was it, free at 7 p.m. EST, that um, he'll do the debate over like the economic mm -hmm. socialism. And then after the 7 p.m. Uh, like PM, uh, EST, then I'm free, right? When the general debate is scheduled, he brings in ethics, which you didn't agree to. So you have two mm -hmm. different topics. One you didn't and notice how you like I review. ask him a question. Yeah, I'm like, so how do we solve these problems? And he immediately goes to, oh, so what's your first principles? What's and I'm like, why didn't you answer my question? He never wants to answer other people's questions. I watched all of his debates. That's what this is what he's like every single time. He's a horrible debater. He's terribly bad faith, and he cannot go up against someone who won't conform to him. Anyone who's going to not list, not go with his little dishonest way of debating, he runs away as fast as he can. Mm. Well, 
My bad for being a, uh, what do you call it? A biosimator. My apologies. <laughs> I love how I he's like, to, uh, oh, he was going to be biased. And then he's like, but he's not being biased. And then he's like, but now you're biased. And like, what are you saying? <laughs> and then he's like, he's like pitching a temper tantrum. And I laugh at him. He's like, no one fools for the fake laugh. It's like the, it's like the Wojak with like the crying face in the back. And it's wearing like the happy mask or the smug mask. Bro, you're fake laughing yeah, at me. Yeah, All right. Anyone else want to come on or something? <sighs> um because I don't think my backup debater can actually make it. I'll debate you on socialism. Being... So true, so true. But um, what? Maybe we should know. like go review one of his debates or something. Because I can, I can like share screen. <laughs> Cause let, 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 all right, let me show you. Let me show you what he's like, okay? Let me show you how bad he is at debating. And yeah, Destiny blocked him. And so did Malfi and Fidel, and so did like several other people, just because he's like so annoying. I'm going to have to find some better. Because this thing was just kind of to have a little bit of fun and then go over my market socialism studies and like see if anyone could contest them. Mm, um, the but there's a lot more market socialists mm -hmm. I can debate who are like actual like good debaters and smart people rather than whatever that was. Like he, he wanted this debate about ethics, right? But let's look at let's look at his ethics debates. Okay, let me pull this up. Let's do a little debate review right here share the screen all right you can see this right mm -hmm. and can you hear it no can't hear it let me maybe no. i forgot to turn audio on might just be me though All right, let me take this into a new window. Do a new window, share, share screen. Yeah, I think I forgot to, there it is. Oh, shoot. All right. Bottling the water. Can you hear it now? Take some of it. Like just open up a bottle and drink it, they would stop you with force. Yeah, I can do it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, let's let's watch this. This isn't that long. If you sure. if you were to if you were to go up to to wherever Nestle is is bottling the water at and just take some of it, like just open up a bottle and drink it, they would stop you with force. So they are they are uh, directly causing you to starve to death. So he thinks if you don't. If someone tries to steal food from you and you don't let them steal food, then you are forcing them to die, right? So that, that that's an interesting thing right off the bat. Very, very, uh, very much an ethical genius here. Uh, in the same way that if I, uh, if you were in my basement and I, like, I, I invite you down to play video games or something, and then I tell you, I'm going upstairs, I'm going to bring us some snacks. And then I close the door and lock it and like bolt it. So he compares you not letting people steal your food. <laughs> or water to you locking them into a basement that yeah th this is like this guy is the new Karl Marx <laughs> and then you starve to death I would have caused you to starve to death right yes you would have caused him to starve to death because you, you locked him in the basement genius Yeah, but there's two completely different situations there. Your one is you forcibly. One of them is you actively uh, getting in uh, in the way of me starving, and the other isn't exactly you actively getting in the way. How? How? <laughs> because there's other ways to grab it. Well, there's, there's, there's there are resources to grab it. Okay, so if I lock you in the basement, but I give you like another way to get out, like if you pay me, if you pay me, uh, uh, or if you sign this contract that says you'll work for me for the next uh, the next year for no pay, 
Uh, would that that then be fair? As long as I, I I have some kind of like payment system that allows you to get out of the basement. No, it's not fair because you forced them to be in the basement. Duh. Yeah, this is kind of confusing. No. Okay, of course not. Yeah, I agree. I agree that this wouldn't be morally fair. So in both cases, in both in both cases, I'm using force to stop you from. In both cases, I'm using force to stop you from eating, and then I'm lovely. I'm levying some payment, right? Okay. So, See, like, there's so many problems with this. Like, first of all, to assume someone has a monopoly over everything, which just isn't the case. Like, you can't gather your own water. You can't get water from anyone else. You can't be given water by anyone else. You can't survive in any other way. And it's like, uh, it's unethical. It's unethical. Why? First of all, it's unethical. Yeah, it's unethical. Why? Also, how is this like any sort of situation that actually happens? Like, I get, I get, you know, hypotheticals. I use plenty of hypotheticals myself. But when you go into the realm of like, this is literally completely irrelevant then I just don't care at this point. Like, and, and this whole thing of like, oh, uh, it, this is unconsensual. Like buying something is unconsensual or wage labor is unconsensual because you can't survive without it. Like at first of all, it's, it's uh, presupposing there's no such thing as communes, charities, anything like that, which isn't true. And then secondly, this literally applies to socialism too, because I am, f in, by their definition of force, I am forced to be a part of society in order to have my needs met. Like, even if they are providing my needs without me asking, I'm still forced to have, to have some sort of interaction with society or else I'll starve to death. Like, even if I want to have that interaction with society, it doesn't matter because I can want to be a wage laborer, but it doesn't matter the, to them because the only other choice is death, which isn't true, first of all, but that's the same thing under socialism. I can say, oh, I'm part of the society, or I die. Which, again, that wouldn't be true, but under their own argument, that would be. It's stupid. They have a... Leftists have such a weird take on consent. It's really concerning. Uh, and, and it can be used in many ways to defend rape or to call things rape that aren't rape. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're both morally wrong. Right. Yeah, both I'm going to go let my dogs are... out. Uh, okay, so yeah, I'll keep going over this with back. everyone watching. Force to sustain the, uh, the sort of interaction here. In one case, the force is like a security guard pulling you away from the water bottles. And in another case, the force is, uh, is me locking the door shut. And that door staying shut. Like... Here's another example. If this makes it simpler for you, uh, there, what if you had like what if I really hate dumb ancaps who go out and debate like this? Like the the guy who's in this debate is really dumb because this is literally just basic critical thinking here. Like why do you, why is this so hard to argue against? Is there anyone even watching? Okay, we saw people watching. That's good. That's good. All right, let's go back. I owned a ring of land around you, a very large ring of land, and you had like a tiny house. Is it uh, is it moral for me to not allow you to pass onto the land? I mean, if you single handedly can defend all. Now this is kind of the the donut argument. Um, now Walter Block has written a lot on this, and what he says is that you are preventing uh, someone from accessing unowned land or accessing their own land therefore it would be immoral even under an anarcho-capitalist position so yes you should have you you should have some sort of path going through but also this is just kind of weird like they, they are like oh yeah someone's just gonna go around buying the land around other people and just forcing them to starve to death and that's just a thing that's gonna happen all of your borders around this yes in this hypothetical i can yeah go ring yeah i've got like i've got a like private army or something security force or whatever uh, then yeah, sure. I, it it would be you got that. It would be morally okay for me to own a ring of land around you and like lock you in and make you starve to death. And then he just kind of uses a thing like, "Oh, this is absurd," and that's it. Like he doesn't say why this is wrong. Like you, I, libertarians can go into an explanation of why this is wrong. Well read libertarians, anyways. Not the guy he's debating because he's never read 
Walter Block. They can go into this. This guy, he can't do it, clearly. He doesn't have any arguments. Yes, yeah, I... Oh, you had the ability to <laughs> put a ring around me and privately own it, then I, I don't see anything wrong with that. You've okay. really taken the time out of your day to make sure that I suffer. So it, it's. I don't see how that's, that makes it morally right, but okay, uh, let's. Uh, yeah, okay, let's let's tie this back to something a little bit less hypothetically. And like, what all he wants to do is keep asking the other person questions, right? That's why I went through my entire opening statement and I presented all this stuff, and then I asked some questions, and he immediately, instead of answering questions, goes to, "Oh, let me start asking you unrelated questions," because that's all he can do. What if I own a lot of land? Like, uh, I don't know. Like, like so let's say I own like the the exact geographical territory of the united states and then i have like yeah yeah good good luck uh homesteading the entire united states super easy if you want to be here you have to sign this contract right i have a contract like that you have to sign and you, you have to and then he goes into oh um what if the what if an actual country does this like first of all you don't sign a contract to live in a country and then he mentions something about the pledge of allegiance which is like the not everyone says the Pledge of Allegiance, and that's not what's keeping you in the country or a citizen. You literally have to pay twenty five hundred dollars to revoke your citizenship. Like this is this is really dumb. Not only that, but the United States, like the government, is a collective. It's a bunch of collective people. None of these people homestead anything. None of these people uh, achieve this through any legitimate means. Like. Most of it was initially taken from Native Americans. And sure, in some instances, you can argue um, there can be war and you can have and you can gain legitimate control over land. But I would say that's only if like the other person aggresses over you or something like that. You know, it's a which maybe you could argue that with some Native American tribes, definitely not all of them. Um, but it wasn't taken by any legitimate means in the first place um, as the government itself. And so at that point, um, if it's illegitimately, illegitimately owned land, then no one's on it. No one owns it. And someone should uh, homestead it and make it theirs. The United States, the, the president didn't homestead the country. He has no, he has no legitimate control over the country. He just has force follow all of my my rules and if you uh if you don't follow my rules you have to go to one of my private courts or something like that and uh this private court can like uh imprison you in a box for some set amount of time would this be moral uh yeah if you okay decided that you own this uh this lot of land and you've given me a certain set of instructions that say follow this or don't be in my land then i am perfectly fine with uh, either signing that contract or not signing that contract. So it, what if I say you have to like sign your allegiance over to me if you want to be in my land? That's okay. That'll, that'll work. So yeah, that's completely fine. Why not? If you are, if this is a consensual contract and I have the ability to back okay. out at any point and say, no, I'm not okay with this. And I have the ability to leave and we both, and we both have a mutual agreement, then that's fine. If, so what if it's like a pledge? That is completely fine. What if it's a verbal contract, like a pledge? It's still the same thing. Okay, so if, so like for example, like a pledge of allegiance. It's the same thing. So like a pledge of allegiance. Uh, sure. Okay, so then you don't actually want any change from the current system. Uh, that's not true at all. Just what? <laughs> what I what I just described is literally exactly the United States. The uh the prospect that I can make a name for myself and on top of what you just said is morally correct the way that the society works. So you said it's morally right. Yeah, he said it's morally, morally right correct. for an individual. This is the state is an individual, dummy. So the United States has, is they're doing nothing morally wrong. <laughs> I mean, you walked yourself into this one. You can't get out of it. You See, like imagine being such a dumb it. and cap. You can't like. You can't respond to this argument. This is so easy. This is literally like 13-year-old kid stuff. This guy uses 13-year-old kid arguments. You were wrong. No, that's not true at all. Like, re rephrase what you just said there. 
Because that's absolutely ridiculous. I agree that your views are ridiculous, but they're your views, not mine, so I don't have to defend them. No, you're no, I said you to repeat what you literally just last said. Like, I chose to live in the United States because I didn't want to live in the EU, because I didn't want to live in Mexico, because I didn't want to live in Canada. I had the choice of any of these countries, right? Choose whatever of any of these countries, yeah. Just like I have the right the right to choose whoever I want to work for in the same sense, correct? Yes, yeah, sure. So no, because these- if I have if I want to go to another country, I have to pay the US for it. No, this is like why did he even want to debate me on ethics? Like, bro, you're not even good at it. These are such bad arguments. Maybe I should have done it. All right, let me see what's going on in here. Uh Are you going to make a video about Modern Warrior? I would, but see, the thing is, Modern Warrior has a very large fan base. And what he's going to do is just make a res- a response video where he doesn't actually say anything. He just gives a generic talking point, doesn't address the actual argument. And then people will come over to my page and start reporting me. And I don't want that to happen. I generally am on pretty good grounds with TikTok. So we'll we'll avoid the mass reporting situations. Um, But it's very interesting. Um, The Navajo, he's actually Navajo. And the Navajo came down from, uh, from Canada, um, North, Northwestern Canada and Alaska. Um, And they're closely related to the Apache. Um, They also came down from that area and they, came all the way down to the uh, to the Midwest and the Southwest and they took over a bunch of other tribes and they raided other tribes and they colonized other tribes and many of these tribes are extinct now whereas the Navajo are still around to a certain extent anyways so he his whole logic is oh the white people are here some white people colonize so the white people are colonizers you know you're a colonizer doesn't he live in like new york or something the navajo certainly aren't from new york there was other native americans in new york but he's there in new york where they're from even though he's all the way his people are all the way from uh from alaska or that that area i'm also part apache and I'm part white, obviously. And a lot of my white blood comes from the Acadians. The Acadians were enslaved by the British. They were made slaves. They were white slaves. And then the Apaches were colonizers. So, yeah, I am a colonizer. But my colonizer blood comes from my Indian blood. <laughs> And my uh, oppressed slave blood comes from the white part. A lot of people don't know about the Acadians. It's very interesting. I'll I'll go ahead and take some questions and then I'll end this. Uh, I got to work on my Cuba video, which, I mean, it's actually nice because I have a lot of time to work on that. I didn't have to worry about this debate, but I am disappointed I didn't get to use my worker co-op studies and stuff like that because I've been wanting to do that. But every time I've tried to have a debate on that, they just go into ethics and then do a bad job at that. This is one of the reasons I don't want to debate ethics is because you're debating these people who have like such a childish mindset. They don't understand anything about ethics. All they want to do is sit there and ask questions over and over and over and go down this rabbit hole And then be like, oh, this is absurd because your logic leads to this absurd uh, conclusion that would never actually happen that has no hold over real life. And then it's just like, no, I don't want to do that. That's why I don't really debate ethics. And even when I do debate ethics, I'm going to make sure I'm debating someone who knows what they're talking about. Not a 15-year-old kid who's like, oh, yeah, I'm the big-time ethics debater. Um, Literally, end cap support America. It's just a waste of time. I want 
solid falsifiable stuff in front of me so I can debate over that and be like, no, you're wrong because I can prove it right here in front of you and you can't argue against this proof. Do you have any plans to debate YouTubers in the future? Well, he was a YouTuber, but that obviously didn't work out. He ran away. Like, Maldi, Vosh, or Infrared. Yeah, I'm going to debate Vosh at some point. I asked him, and he hasn't responded to my DM. Um, this was sort of a practice for getting to Vosh, because, you know, I, I, I if I if I want to see if my worker co-op arguments hold up, I have to debate people for worker co-ops. But this guy didn't want to do that, because he can't. Um, he debated I Hypocrite. And then some guy did, like, a review of the debate and looked at like all the sources that synth used used in the debate and he lied about stuff and he had stuff that had like uh statistically insignificant results and stuff like that and it was just like yeah this guy clearly doesn't understand statistics he doesn't know he doesn't read studies he just like reads the abstract um and apparently like in the debate he pulled up like google scholar and was trying to find studies like while he was debating, which is ridiculous. Um, and then he also refused to show me his studies before the debate. So um, I, I tried to ask him for them, and then he like tried to flip it uh, kind of the same way he like tried to flip this debate around. He tried to flip around the conversation and turn it into, oh no, you have to show me yours, which I would have, but yeah, not be I didn't because he came at me all like bad faith like that. And like I said, I I told him several times in voice chats uh, with other people watching, and I'm like, this isn't going to be an ethics debate. I don't want to debate you on ethics. We're going to debate exactly what I said. And he is like, no, I'm going to bring up ethics. And I'm like, well, I'm going to tell you to shut up and change this, and we're going to go back on the subject. And that's exactly what's going to happen. And then he even said he wasn't going to show up here in the stream yard. And then he did. I'll, I'll give him that at least like, it's because he didn't want to seem scared, but he ended up leaving anyways. So, debate infrared. Um, I've never really seen one of his debates. I just saw him talking to socialism done left, and he just like yelled at him the whole time. Um, and then it seems like he just always wants to go into dialectical materialism. Like every time he talks about anything, he just wants to go into dialectical materialism. Like he's he's like ECP, uh, dialectical materialism, and it's just kind of annoying. Um, I mean, maybe I could debate dialectical materialism at some point, but that's not really what I focus on. So I don't know. I'll have to check out more of his debates because apparently he said he'll debate me, but I just uh, hadn't checked him out really. So, didn't you have 500k followers? No, I've never had that many. Cybersyn debunks the ECP. No, Cybersyn didn't even like actually address what was needed to be addressed. So, all right, well, we'll wrap this up. Um, I will work on my Cuba video, it's gonna be a very great video. It's gonna be going, uh, I have a special guest who's going to be on, um, a professor, and he has done research on Cuba, and I'm going to bring up some research as well and show that Cuba is not a social success and never has been, and we'll talk a little bit about what's going on in Cuba now, and we'll talk a little bit about sanctions and stuff like that. Um... How do you become a Hoppian? By reading Hop <laughs> and, and watching his lectures and stuff. Yeah. I've got all of Hoppa's books. Every single one. Spontaneous Order is another. It's kind of a Hoppian book. It wasn't written by Hoppa. Um, Stefan Kinsella did the foreword, and it was written by Chase Rachels. But this is a good book for Hoppians as well. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, I'll see you guys later. Hopefully next time we have a debate on here, it will actually happen and the person won't run away. Um, 
And I'll go ahead and make a video on TikTok about the uh, research on worker co-ops. And hopefully, you know, we'll get we'll get another market socialist on here and we'll go over them, see if they have any contentions. Um, and we'll work our way up to Vosh, debate him on worker co-ops because he's the guy for that, apparently. And yeah, well, I'll see you guys later.